ada penghasil minyak buat hasil minyak OPEC hmm, minyak negara-negara penghasil minyak bumi OPEC hmm, itu ya negara-negara yang ekspor ekspor minyak gitu kan Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. OPEC itu kepanjangan dari Organization Petroleum Exporting Countries. Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. Organization of the Export. Eh, Organization Petroleum Exporting Countries. yang saya tahu ya, OPEC itu merupakan organisasi yang berisi negara-negara yang dapat dikategorikan sebagai eksportir dari minyak bumi. OPEC itu seperti dari saya bilang kan volume ini, volume buat negara-negara penghasil minyak. Dan mereka juga apparently mereka juga uh, set kuota produksi minyak tiap negara. Ya, jadi mereka itu kayak kartel juga, bukan cuma Oh, tapi kayak kartel juga. Itu tuh suatu organisasi perkumpulan di, eh, yang mewadahi para pengekspor ekspor minyak untuk mencapai kestabilan dalam dunia perminyakan. Negara-negara penghasil minyak. Menurut yang saya tahu, OPEC itu organisasi yang isinya negara-negara pengekspor ekspor minyak itu. Yang saya tahu sih itu. <laughs> Puluhan kali ya? Di tahun 1965 kok eh? 1960 Ya pokoknya itulah ya <laughs> Pada tahun 1965 Nggak apa, nggak apa pas Di yang jelas uh, Banyak negara-negara Timur Tengah Dan negara-negara penghasil minyak lainnya kita tapi nggak terlalu nggak tahu pasti contohnya negara apa aja Iran Terus? Uh, Saudi Uni Emirat Arab Qatar Oman Saudi Arabia Iran Venezuela Indonesia lagi Irak Kuwait Rusia udah itu dulu kali ya sekarang saat ini tuh OPEC berjumlah 14 negara untuk lebih lengkapnya mungkin bisa dibaca sendiri kali ya biar menarik aja gitu ya Sebenarnya tuh untuk pendirinya itu ada Arab Saudi, ada Kuwait, gitu kan? Ini bisa dibaca-baca juga. Irak, Iran, Kuwait, Arab Saudi dan Venezuela. Hmm, Arab bukan Arab Saudi. Ya. Apa lagi? Karena nggak terlalu. Kalau menurut saya kita kembali lagi ke definisi rezim dan organisasi internasional. <laughs> Karena uh, fungsinya sendiri jelas untuk mengatur rezim minyak internasional di mana nantinya OPEC bisa mengeluarkan regulasi-regulasi atau mungkin aturan-aturan yang mungkin bisa memperlancar arus perdagangan minyak bumi internasional seperti itu. Jadi uh, untuk apa ya menyelesaikan sengketa, menyelesaikan sengketa atau mungkin menyelesaikan menghadapi hambatan-hambatan yang mungkin didapat pada saat perdagangan minyak internasional. Makanya ada lembaga OPEC untuk menaungi negara-negara mengekspor ini. Gitu. OPEC itu kan memberikan negara-negara yang hasil minyak yang apa namanya? Yang kebanyakan kan negara berkembang ya itu memberikan suatu platform, suatu forum untuk berpendapat di dunia gitu. jadi apa namanya kalau negara-negara penghasil minyak itu apa ngomong sendiri-sendiri nggak bakal ada yang dengar aku rasa OPEC itu memberikan uh, suatu platform buat mereka untuk sebagai satu suara menyuarakan pendapatnya tujuan dari tujuan dari didirikannya OPEC ini kan berawal dari bagaimana begitu banyaknya negara-negara penghasil minyak di dunia yang saat itu tuh belum ada kestabilan bagi kestabilan dalam perminyakan di dunia lalu dibutuhkan OPEC uh, 
dibentuk OPEC sehingga dengan adanya OPEC ini negara-negara yang uh, ekspor eh, negara-negara yang memiliki mie, uh, tambang minyak yang sangat besar yang terus sama ekspor itu bisa di, diarahkan bisa disabilkan gitu harus kemana nya harus kemana nya jadi uh, tidak tidak ada monopoli yang terjadi di dalam diperminyakan oleh negara-negara adik kuasa lainnya gitu jadi sehingga dengan adanya OPEC ini mudahlah untuk pengaturan-pengaturan minyak sehingga yang eh, namanya ter- eh, langka Uh, isu kelangkaan di tahun 2030 mengenai tentang uh, bahan fosil itu sudah tidak uh, bisa di bisa dihentikan gitu. Ini gitu. Uh, kalau aku sih kalau manfaatnya itu untuk apa mengontrol apa jumlah minyak yang beredar di dunia. So what exactly is OPEC? OPEC stands for the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. It's made up of 12 countries including Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, Kuwait, and Iran. The group controls about 80% of the world's oil reserves and 45% of global production. OPEC was founded in 1960 in a bid to control the export of oil to the rest of the world. In 1973, OPEC issued an embargo against the United States and parts of the Europe, leading to oil shortage and a global economic downturn. OPEC's subsequent influence declined during the 80s and 90s until the events of September 11, 2001, which saw oil prices rise once more. Today, however, has seen the influence of OPEC drastically reduced in November crude was trading below $80 a barrel. Pada tahun 1960, pembentukan OPEC oleh lima negara berkembang penghasil minyak di Banghat pada bulan September 1960 terjadi pada saat transisi dalam lanskap ekonomi dan politik internasional. Dengan dekolonisasi yang luas dan kelahiran banyak negara merdeka baru di negara berkembang, pasar minyak internasional didominasi oleh perusahaan multinasional Seven Sisters dan sebagian besar terpisah dari negara bekas Uni Soviet dan ekonomi terpusat lainnya. OPEC mengembangkan visi kolektifnya menetapkan tujuan dan mendirikan sekretariatnya pertama di Jenewa dan kemudian pada tahun 1965 di Wina. Ini mengadopsi sebuah pernyataan deklarasi kebijakan perminyakan di negara-negara anggota pada tahun 1968 yang menekankan hak yang tidak dapat dicabut dari semua negara untuk menerapkan kedaulatan permanen atas sumber daya alam mereka demi kepentingan pembangunan nasional mereka. Keanggotaan tumbuh menjadi 10 pada tahun 1969. Pada tahun 1970, OPEC naik ke keunggulan internasional selama dekade ini, karena negara-negara anggotanya mengambil alih industri perminyakan domestik dan memperoleh sebuah pernyataan utama mengenai harga minyak mentah di pasar dunia. Pada dua kesempatan, harga minyak naik tajam di pasar dunia, yang dipicu oleh embargo minyak Arab pada tahun 1973 dan pecahnya revolusi Iran pada tahun 1979. OPEC memperluas mandatnya dengan KTT pertama di negara bagian dan pemerintahan di Aljir pada tahun 1975 yang menyikapi nasib negara-negara miskin dan menyerukan sebuah era baru kerjasama dalam hubungan internasional demi pengembangan ekonomi dunia dan stabilitas. Hal ini menyebabkan terbentuknya dana OPEC untuk pembangunan internasional pada tahun 1976. Negara-negara anggota memulai skema pembangunan sosial ekonomi yang ambisius. Keanggotaan tumbuh menjadi 13 pada tahun 1975. Pada tahun 1980, setelah mencapai tingkat rekor di awal dekade ini, harga mulai melemah. Sebelum menerjang pada tahun 1986, respon minyak besar dan pergeseran konsumen menjauh dari hidrokarbon ini. Harga real di bagian akhir dekade ini, namun sampai sekitar setengah tingkat pada bagian awal dan bagian OPEC mengenai output dunia yang baru tumbuh mulai pulih, Hal ini didukung oleh OPEC yang memperkenalkan pagu produksi kelompok yang dibagi di antara negara-negara anggota dan keranjang referensi untuk penetapan harga, serta kemajuan signifikan dengan dialog dan kerjasama OPEC atau non-OPEC yang dipandang untuk penting untuk stabilitas pasar dan harga yang wajar. Isu lingkungan muncul pada agenda energi internasional. Pada tahun 1990, harga bergerak kurang dramatis daripada tahun 1970-an dan 1980-an dan tindakan OPEC yang tepat mengurangi dampak pasar dari permusuhan 
Timur Tengah pada tahun 1990 sampai 1991. Pada tahun 2000, mekanisme harga minyak OPEC yang inovatif membantu memperkuat dan menstabilkan harga minyak mentah di tahun-tahun awal dekade ini. Namun, gabungan antara kekuatan pasar, spekulasi, dan faktor lainnya mengubah situasi pada tahun 2004. mendorong kenaikan harga dan meningkatkan volatilitas di pasar minyak mentah yang dipasok dengan baik. Pada tahun 2010, perekonomian global merupakan risiko utama pasar minyak pada awal dekade ini, karena ketidakpastian makroekonomi global dan meningkatnya risiko seputar sistem keuangan internasional membebani ekonomi. Meningkatnya keresahan sosial di banyak bagian dunia mempengaruhi penawaran dan permintaan sepanjang paruh pertama dekade ini, meskipun pasar tetap seimbang. Harga stabil antara 2011 dan pertengahan 2014 sebelum kombinasi spekulasi dan kelebihan pasokan menyebabkan turun pada tahun 2014. Pola perdagangan terus bergeser dengan permintaan meningkat di negara-negara Asia dan umumnya menyusut di OECD. Fokus dunia pada masalah lingkungan multilateral mulai mempertajam dengan harapan untuk sebuah kesepakatan perubahan iklim dan dipimpin oleh PBB. OPEC terus mencari stabilitas di pasar dan berusaha untuk lebih meningkatkan dialog dan kerjasama dengan konsumen dan produsen non OPEC. Oil. In the news, we constantly hear that the world is running out of oil. This should mean that worldwide supply will be smaller and the price of oil will be higher. However, the opposite is happening. Oil prices have dropped significantly, making oil relatively cheaper than ever. How is this possible? The price of oil, gas and coal is formed by supply and demand. Until recently, three forces influence this. Which forces are these? The first force is the growing importance of oil in our economy. We need oil for most heating, transportation, electricity, and it is a prime raw material for chemicals, fertilizer and plastics. Because we use so much oil, the demand continues to increase. The second force is the emergence of monopoly positions. When capitalism reigns, multinational oil companies, merchants, and even individual investors can obtain monopoly positions in various parts of the production process. This allows them to set a price for their part of the process and hence impact the overall price of oil. The third force is the collection of geopolitical games being played in order to gain political power. An example is the nationalization of oil companies in a country, allowing the government to control production supply and impact the price of oil. So, these three forces have always determined the price of oil. At the end of the 20th century, a fourth force has entered the scene. Burning oil is one of the main causes of global warming. Therefore, alternative forms of self-renewing energy must replace oil as soon as possible. For this to happen, the price of oil should be higher and therefore fairer than it is now. This would make renewable sources more attractive to use. However, the price of oil still seems to be controlled by monopoly positions and geopolitical games. So who is playing these games, keeping the price so low? You might think that multinational oil companies like BP and Shell are in charge. In reality, there are many more national and international players in the oil game. One of these players is the OPEC, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. Forming this alliance of 12 already influential oil producing countries made them powerful enough to determine worldwide supply and hence control the price in the past decades. However, in recent years other players have also become powerful. To try to swiftly defeat this competition, OPEC has opened its oil taps completely, greatly increasing supply. This caused the price to have fallen so dramatically lately. Such a low price is not favorable for any oil producing countries, so even the countries within OPEC are suffering. Yet founder Saudi Arabia persists in hope of defeating competitors and securing OPEC's dominance in the worldwide oil trade. One of the powerful new players is Russia. Whenever OPEC carefully decreased production to stabilize the price of oil, Russia gradually increased its market share. This has resulted into Russia becoming one of the world's leading exporters of oil. Another major player, China, uses different tactics. Instead of taking on the competition, 
they economically stimulate several poor countries, mostly in Africa, in exchange for the rights to drill there and import the oil directly to China. This allows China to keep most of their oil trade away from the world market. The United States was always highly dependent on OPEC for their oil. In recent years, they have made great strides in extracting shale oil and gas, which is expensive and potentially harmful for the environment. Taking these risks made the US less dependent on other parties. With all these new players in the oil game, it seems that OPEC is losing the power to determine the oil price. So what will happen now? One scenario is that OPEC will succeed in crushing the new competition and have the power again. Or will all oil-producing parties survive with this low price? Or will there be a new dominant producer? All these scenarios rely on geopolitical games being able to keep oil an attractive source of energy so that renewable energy sources don't stand a chance. But maybe the damage of oil on the environment will force oil to get a higher price, which would allow renewable energy sources to enter the market more rapidly. Is this just wishful thinking? Only time will tell. Oil, the foundation of today's society. Without it, we would be nothing. Today, America consumes 14 to 15 billion barrels of oil a day. Imagine what would happen if all of a sudden the supply was cut off. It would destroy the economy and the world we live in. Very similar to the effect of the 1973 oil embargo. Throughout the 1900s, the United States became more and more involved in the Middle East due to the oil. An ally of US was Israel, one enemy was Iran. The main way America received the oil from the Middle East was through trade with OPEC, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. The group was composed of many Arab countries, including Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and Venezuela. They were critical to America's oil supplies. Although it was in America's best interest to not to injure OPEC, they did so in 1971, when Richard Nixon took America off the gold standard. He made this statement regarding it. This caused the gold price to up and the American dollar value to plummet. For a moment, OPEC considered pricing the oil and gold to keep the revenue from disappearing but didn't follow through this idea. This decision of Nixon's aggravated OPEC and created tensions between it and America, while the gold standard led to a rise in tensions, the Yom Kippur War was a tipping point in the passing of the embargo. The war began on October 6, 1973, as a result of territorial disputes between Israel, Egypt, and Syria. Both Syria and Egypt were fighting to regain the land they had lost to Israel due to the Six-Day War of 1967. During the war, Arab nations some belonging to OPEC sided with Syria and Egypt. The United States, on the other hand, supported Israel and supplied the country with military equipment. This angered the OPEC Arab countries, so as a result, led by Saudi Arabia, these countries made an oil embargo as punishment to the United States. Although the war only lasted until October 25, 1973, the embargo continued until March 1974. This embargo had a large effect on Americans. Throughout the United States, oil prices rocketed as the supply diminished and the demand remained high. At gas stations, land went off the box just to fill up the car. For the first time, Americans were truly able to feel how reliant they were on the Middle East for oil. Nixon, the president at the time, took many immediate actions to deal with the issue. Two particular actions were lowering the federal speed limit to 55 miles per hour and rationing gas. The way he did mind how gas was rationed was by people license plates. People with auto gas numbers on their license plate would only get gas on number days the same applied. For even here, is Cooper Millage to talk a little bit more 
about his own experience during this tough time. Another large effect this embargo had was that it deepened the pre-existing recession within the United States. As a result of rising oil prices, people were forced to limit the amount they were spending, furthering a lack of economic growth. Nixon realized that the solution needed to be reached to this oil issue, so he took action. The first thing he did was establishing a plan to create the Alaskan pipeline. By making this line, Americans would not have to be so reliant on Middle East for oil, as they would have some of their own in the future. Another thing he did was that he started an initiative to find alternate sources of energy by 1980s. Following Nixon's presidency, the embargo stayed in front of the mines' presidents. Each president took a different stance and created new ideas regarding energy and oil. Although they all had separate specific ideas in mind, they all shared a common plan limit oil imports and increase domestic production of energy. Early on presidents made this the focus of their candidacy over time. However, the panic and confusion of the crisis died off and the issue of oil became less and less of a concern during their time. In office, each president has supported or made programs to limit American dependence on others for oil. One major program was the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. This program allowed the United States to be much more independent from Middle Eastern countries. The reserve was made to supply 90 days of oil to Americans if another embargo were to be enacted. The reserve idea was originally created by Gerald Ford, and today it is still intact. Today, the oil reserves are located in Texas, Louisiana, and the Gulf of Mexico. Another critical initiative was the introduction of hybrid cars. Bill Clinton made this idea a part of his presidency. He wanted to revolutionize the motor industry by increasing the miles per gallon on cars. This would help the same oil in case of another shortage of it due to a foreign dispute. This initiative Clinton's is still well intact today as many political figures continue to support the idea of electric green car. A final initiative sparked by the embargo was a search for other forms of energy. Two forms of energy that have been introduced are nuclear and renewable. Presidents such as Gerald Ford, Ford Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, and Bill Clinton have been very influential in furthering research of the sources of energy. This crisis continues to have a large impact on society today. It can be argued that the embargo was the start of resentment fell towards Muslims and Arabs. At the time of the crisis, many U.S. citizens were furious and began deploying people from the Middle East for a decision made by OPEC. This was the start of the stereotype that all Muslims and Arabs are terrorists, as U.S. citizens felt they were being held hostage. Terrorist attacks such as 9-11 were in the start of this prejudice and instead built upon pre-existing feelings that, may young, that many young Americans developed when they experienced the oil embargo firsthand. In addition, this crisis continues to have a large impact on today's politics. Donald Trump, similar to many presidents in the past, has created plans for the increased production of oil. He plans to lift many of the restrictions which exist in the oil industry in order to increase domestic production. Everything goes as planned. America's reliance on other countries for oil will decrease. However, only time will tell if this vision of his will be able to make America great again.